Hello everyone, welcome to another Crypto Cringe stream. I'm Hannah, your host. How is everyone doing? This one's gonna be a doozy. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, um... Mm. We're on a hype train. Thanks everyone. 39% <laughs> to level 2 on the hype train. Merusama with 31 months says, Oh my god, 31 months. Hello, Hannah in chat. Yesterday I took a chance and reached out to a friend I had a falling out with 14 years ago, but I still very much cared about. Turns out she'd been waiting, wanting to reach out for years too. Now we've been talking and it's great. That's awesome. Good. Krizia, thanks for 28 months. Um, Starlight did nothing wrong, says day two of commenting Shrek with no context. Is it really no context if you give me the context? <laughs> um, Gnome Pickle says Hype train go choo choo um, Overthought with 50 bits says Train good, car bad Starry Beauty with 100 bits says Good news as a fellow Michigander um, The conspiracy creeps who plotted to kidnap Whitmer Were finally sentenced today Good Starling CJ thanks for 17 months H. Baird, thanks for 45 bits, says Boxy NFT when. You know what? You can just cop. Boxy is um, not all about that capitalism. So if you just want to screenshot Boxy, then Boxy's yours. Nemesaur Colboth, thank you so much for gifting 10 tier 1 subs. Just fucking coming in here and rocking the hype train. Thank you. What level did we get to now? Level 4 complete. Thank you, Nemesaur. Bumble Homestead, thanks for gifting a sub. Meek with uh, 45 bits says, Is the life of a narcissist stressful? I can't imagine how stressful it is to deny reality as it stares you in the face constantly. I would imagine so. Xenon Eczemer, thanks for 26 months. 20% to level 5. Pretty kick-ass hype train today. Who's your friend? Thanks for gifting 10 tier 1 subs. Getting us over level 5 of the hype train. Thank you very much. Bits are the only real digital currency that matters. <laughs> um, Skiffazoa says, Good news, everyone. Trump's doing NFTs. Oh, we know. We know. <laughs> um, Voss and Raven says, Was just thinking. Sure would like to see what Hannah has to say about... Um, sorry, the thing scrolled. Sure would like to see what Hannah has to say about this NFT nonsense today. And lo and behold, there you were. 
<laughs> I'm always here for you when it comes to Trump and NFTs. Creepy Doll in the Wall, thanks for gifting five tier one subs. Lots of gift subs today. Thank you, everyone. Very generous. Gnome Pickles says, and at $99 a pop, oh my, what a steal is this. <laughs> in that this seems like legit theft, it feels a little bit like it, doesn't it? 35% to level 7 on the hype train. Wow. Got over level 6 and everything. Cool beans. DeWolfie, thanks for four months. Take all your D&D &D subs. <laughs> Thank you. I gotta set up that link so people can, like, automatically get sent to do Prime subs, too. I know Jake does that. I gotta steal some of his Prime subs. <laughs> Fedekagami says, Wow, Trump is really desperate for money now that nobody wants to donate to him, huh? It seems like it. This is a desperate move even by his standards. This makes him look like shit. And he's Donald Trump, so, like... <laughs> kind of hard to make the bar go even lower, you know? Is Trump charging Ethereum for his NFTs or regular money? I'll get into this, but to be clear, Trump has licensed his likeness and name to these people. He has nothing to do with this company at all. He already got his his paycheck. He got his paycheck when they, when they cut a check to use his picture. That's it. He has nothing to do with this other than that. He basically sold his image to other grifters. <laughs> Here's truly the one pony says, I was hanging out with a friend and got super high yesterday. So high it felt like everything was moving in slow motion. It was insane. I got them, uh, got them my local dispensary. That dispensary shit, I'll tell ya. It's crazy. I sell crazy stuff now. Overthought says, his voter base isn't exactly tech savvy. I can't imagine many of them even know how to purchase NFTs. Well, good for you. The website itself stores them for you. So it's fine, as long as the website stays up. You can enjoy your Trump JPEGs. <laughs> Chiba Hawk says, This is, announcement is perhaps the most important announcement to ever be announced. These NFTs are almost guaranteed to increase in value. Believe me, buy 45 and you can have a dinner that will never actually <laughs> coalesce. Fenikagami says, That's actually surprisingly smart of him. It guarantees his chance to get money if needed. Yeah. Still feel like this probably opens him up to lawsuits, but, you know, whatever, when this inevitably goes to shit. <laughs> the website that already crashed once today? Yes, that website. <laughs> hey, Ren. Gnome Pickles says, I mean, I feel a bit hypocritical really laughing at this considering my stream library cost about as much as a house in the Midwest. <laughs> or Steam library. No, but you can actually play those games. You can play them. Like, they provide you a thing that you can do. These don't do that. Like, I hate Twitch Times 2 says, Did you ever see the MAGA coin his fans tried to launch? His fan base loves crypto. Some of them do. There are crypto Trump people, for sure. Baja recommended I wear red lipstick to compliment the reds of the Trump thing. I think it was a good choice. <laughs> 59% to level 7 with a minute left. Once this is done, we'll get into the Trump bullshit. And then after that, we'll get into some other crypto stuff. The market's not doing well. Sam Bankman Freed's been arrested in the Bahamas and is going to be extradited to the United States, I believe. So, good stuff. <laughs> Here's truly the one pony says never get the idea of NFTs and cryptocurrency. That's because you're probably looking for a function. The function is to make money. The function is to grift people into thinking it's worth something so you can sell it to people. Moira Soma says the big question is, of course, will Peter get all of them? I don't know if Peter has enough to get any. They're like a hundred bucks. <laughs> I hate Twitch Times 2 says, Do you think Trump will ever start selling gold to try and scam his base? 
I think he's already, like, given his, um, likeness to some coins or something. Or I guess maybe they can just do it anyway because he was the president. I don't know how the likeness of the president works. Because he's a very public figure, you know? Do you need to pay to use a, the likeness of a president while they're still alive? Bittergrin says, I'm just surprised it took him this long to try something like this. <laughs> yeah. If you just drop 4500 on them, Trump will have dinner with you? <laughs> I saw that. I, I highly doubt that. I highly, highly doubt it. Thanks for the hype train, everyone. That was great. Yours Truly says, what is a call for an uprising saying about this past election cycle? I actually haven't caught up with him. I don't know. <laughs> I know he always thinks elections are fake anyway, so... He probably just thinks it's fake and doesn't matter. All right, everyone, it's finally time to get into the Trump NFTs. Now, there is an ad. There is an ad for this project, and Trump is the one speaking in the ad. I warn you, this is the funniest thing anyone has ever made. Ever. So, like, if you're eating, maybe be careful so you don't choke. Don't drink anything during this trailer, so maybe you won't spit take. I just need you to know, this is one of the funniest things ever written, and satire is dead. H. Baird says, let's all chip in and spend the entire dinner roasting him. <laughs> Are we all ready? I'm selling it hard because it's good. Do you know how much I, I fucking cried laughing at this earlier, okay? Hold on, I'll turn off Boxy, but I will say as a verbal disclaimer, don't buy this coin. Don't buy these NFTs. I think it's a scam. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Donald Trump. Hopefully your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington. Hello everyone, this is Donald Trump, hopefully your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington, with an important announcement to make. I'm doing my first official Donald J. Trump NFT collection right here and right now. By, by launching nukes. <laughs> They're called Trump Digital Trading Cards. These cards feature some of... <laughs> the really incredible artwork pertaining to... <laughs> that one's my favorite! <laughs> Look at how thin he is! <laughs> My life and my career, it's been very exciting. You can collect your Trump <laughs> digital cards. Wait, hold on. Life and These cards feature some of the really incredible artwork pertaining to my life and my career. It's been very exciting. You can collect your Trump digital cards, just like a baseball card or other collectibles. <laughs> what is this NFT thing? They're like baseball cards, Mr. Trump. <laughs> They're like baseball. Baha, thanks for 31 months, says you're too cute. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, we're gonna watch, we're gonna look at some of his, the truth so, or some of the reactions from the QAnon community about this, actually, because they're hilarious. 
Here's one of the best parts. Each card comes with an automatic chance to win amazing prizes like... <laughs> Just look at this ad format! Like, it looks like a scam you'd see at 3 a.m. Like, <laughs> on cable television! This man was the president! I feel like I'm in RoboCop, but not like in the story of RoboCop, but in the interstitials. <laughs> Alpaca sent, thanks for 10 months, says sub baby is overdue. This sub baby's name is going to be huge NFTs. Huge NFTs. Uh, Gnome Pickle says, Captain... I cannot Photoshop his weird head on any more bodies. We have lost 30 quality control reps to laughter-related deaths in the last hour. Please, we need to stop. It's time to stop. <laughs> Logarth says, is this the same layout font as modern slot games with the screens? <laughs> Scam you would see at 3 a.m. Is Trump true? dinner with me i don't know if that's an amazing prize but it's <laughs> what we have <laughs> look at the picture of this could be you you could be on either side of sexy chiseled donald trump <laughs> oh no i accidentally clicked off Oh no, we have to watch it from the beginning. Whoopsie. Are these even on blockchain or are they just JPEGs? They claim they're actual NFTs on the blockchain. Hello everyone, this is Donald Trump. Hopefully your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington, with an important announcement to make. I'm doing my first official Donald J. Trump NFT collection right here and right now. They're called Trump Digital Trading Cards. These cards feature some of the really incredible artwork pertaining to my life and my career. It's been very exciting. You can collect your Trump digital cards, just like a baseball card or other collectibles. Here's one of the best parts. Each card comes with an automatic chance to win amazing prizes, like dinner with me. I don't know if that's an amazing prize, but it's what we have. Or golf <laughs> with you and a group of your friends at one of my Beautiful golf courses, and they are beautiful. <laughs> Here's some B-roll. Hydrate. Hbeard says, this is like one of those RoboCop commercials. No worse, this is like a Robert Cop commercial if they'd ever existed. I understood that reference. Logarth says, also maybe we cover this later, but apparently he has done this kind of have dinner with me prize before and nobody seems to ever have won. There are no official records of him having dinner with sweepstakes winners from his past scams. That is the least surprising thing I've ever heard. That makes so much sense. Of course he doesn't. Who's checking that? <laughs> I'm also doing Zoom. It costs $4,500 to have dinner with him, by the way. So you could pay four and a half thousand dollars and then get scammed by not actually getting dinner with him. Calls, a one-on-one -on -one meeting, autographing memorabilia, and so much more. We're doing a lot. My official Trump digital trading. He's riding an elephant. The cards are $99, which doesn't say. That's a bargain. That's a bargain. Trading cards are $99, which doesn't sound like very much for what you're getting. Buy one and you- It doesn't? Does Donald Trump not know how much $100 is? I genuinely don't think he does. This is a how much could a banana cost $12 energy. Um, Occult Comics says, having a feeling today, here's, um, Spange- Spange boy, me boy, Bob, me boy, Bob, Bob, Sponge Square boy, me boy, me, no, moy, bioy, moy, me, noy, singing. What the fuck? I was handsome. <laughs> Are you okay? We'll join a very exclusive community. It's my community. 
And I think it's something you're going to like, and you're going to like it a lot. They also make perfect gifts. So you can buy them with your credit card or crypto. All you need is an email. Put these cards on your credit card. Pay them off at 30% APR over three years. Mail <laughs> address. Go to collecttrumpcards.com and buy your Trump digital trading cards right now before they are all gone, and they will be gone. This is my first official Trump trading card NFT collection. So it won't be the last, so I shouldn't buy this one because you're going to flood the market. And you get a chance to meet me. Go to collecttrumpcards.com right now. And remember, Christmas is coming, and this makes a great Christmas gift. <laughs> Imagine it's Christmas, and you're at your family's house. <laughs> Nick Snort thinks are 30 months, and you receive a gift. And in this box, there's a link and a passcode to get into an account on collecttrumpcards.com because your family has bought you for $99 a Donald Trump NFT. Mm. Overthought says even Krampus is afraid of that. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. So that's the trailer for the NFTs. Cheap Hawk says take that still right there with Santa Trump. Now find a pig of actual Trump and do a side by side. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what their prizes are. Should we see their prizes? Buy Trump trading cards and win Trump prizes. Yes, this digital trading card collection is a great opportunity for Donald J. Trump fans to collect Trump-inspired art that you can keep forever. But it's more than that. Each digital trading card includes an entry to win, ex excuse me, to win exclusive prizes owned by 45 himself. Only $99 each. Oh, I'm so excited to see this list of prizes. Bittergrin says, but look at how high quality the art is. That's true. <laughs> I hate Twitch Times too. says, is this the start of the quantum economy Peter was talking about? Uh, you can just right click and save. Save image as. Oh my God, I got a free Trump NFT. I can't believe it. I just saved $99. Look, I saved it. It's mine now. <laughs> I literally did. Death, El Death Guard Elite says, My parents want to visit me before Christmas. I am admittedly scared my um, mom will announce she bought me a Trump NFT for Christmas. She loves Trump and she has a cardboard cutout of Trump in her bedroom. Does she... L nope. 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 Not going to talk about your mom like that. Never mind. <coughs> Sorry. Ah, here are some prizes you can win. Ah, gala dinner with Donald Trump. Black tie optional luxury event held in Florida. President Donald Trump will be hosting an extraordinary event for lucky Donald Trump collectible holders. There will be entertainment and fine dining with President Trump. Will you be there? Probably not. Stone Corbell, thanks for 30 months. H. Baird says, for the prizes, it says no purchase necessary. Everyone knows what they need to do. Yeah, do you guys all want to go meet Trump? Let's go meet Trump. <laughs> we'll just heckle him. <laughs> Boo. Hats off, Duke Desiree. What do you want me to wear? Uh, I will have you know the Jadora has been removed from the lineup for dysphoria reasons. But anything else that you've seen me wear is fine. Anyway. Um, the finest dinner provided by a top local chef. Presentation by Donald J- with Donald J. Trump videos, photos, and footage. Dealer's choice? Alright, I'll pick in a sec. Wow, so Donald Trump will show you videos and photos and footage? Which is the same as videos, but sure, fine. Music playing throughout the evening. Is background music part of the prize? 
I wouldn't count that separately, that you're gonna play music in the background during dinner. <laughs> Take home a branded 45 Trump wine glass. Ooh, classy. From a boxed wines. Plenty of fantastic photo opportunities, I bet. <laughs> oh. Ooh, that looks good the way it is. Cool, cool, cool. We'll go with that. <sighs> 45 meet and greet cocktail hour. <laughs> you could be one of the lucky holders to win a ticket to an exclusive meet and greet cocktail hour at Mar-a-Lago with President Donald Trump. This is your chance to ask questions and spend some time chatting over cocktails with the 45th President of the United States. Individual meeting with 45. Sitting down with President Trump equals mind blown. You could be the lucky person to get a chance to meet with Donald Trump in person at Mar-a-Lago. You'll be escorted into his private club and have the opportunity to sit down and talk with him one-on-one. -on -one. Ask all the questions you want and get all the advice you can handle from the man that has changed business and America. <laughs> golf with the president. Four, if you're a golfer, you can't ask for more than this extraordinary opportunity to play one hour with Donald J. Trump. How, doesn't it take more than an hour to play a game of golf? <laughs> Whatever. How cool will it be to tee off at his incredibly beautiful go Trump golf palm beach? Even if you spend all day in the sand, this golf outing with the president is a memory you'll treasure for a lifetime. And the best part is, it's f for a group of four, so you can invite two friends to come along and enjoy the experience with you. If you don't golf, you can trade your prize or sell it. <laughs> or, finally, oh no, there's more. Individual Zoom call with Donald. Get an individual Zoom call with the president, ask all your questions, and meet with him virtually. How cool would it be to tell your friends that you were on a Zoom call with the president? <laughs> Is that cool? Um, a cult comic says when Trump walks by and the trail of weird Trump smell hits the fans. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's one thing that I think the uh, latest Spider-Man movie missed. When the goblin blew people up and stuff, they should have turned into Skellingtons. Group Zoom call with Donald J. Trump. Donald J. Trump will also be holding a group Zoom call for some lucky winners to do some Q&A and share some of his experiences and advice. You'll get to be one of the exclusive attendees to this event and be on the Zoom call with Donald. How many people can say they've done that? More, now that you're auctioning them off, basically. <laughs> Gnome Pickle says, I'm sure the Zoom call won't just be someone holding up a cardboard cutout with a lame impression. Not at all. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Hand-signed memorabilia. If you're the biggest Donald J. Trump fan out there, you'll be happy to hear there are opportunities to win hand-signed photographs and memorabilia from John President Donald Trump. This will be personally signed by him and sent directly to a few lucky winners, and that could be you. Definitely not auto-penned. Gold edition signed NFTs. As part of the digital trading card set, there will be a limited number of rare gold edition cards that are digitally signed by- DIGITALLY SIGNED BY PRESIDENT TRUMP! DIGITALLY SIGNED BY PRESIDENT TRUMP! Do you know what that means? They took a PNG of his signature and they put it on the picture on a layer. You can't sign a digital file. Like, that's not how this works. Not really. Bittergrin says, any of this sign memorabilia include the nuclear codes? Fennec Agami says, and the hilarious thing is, I know Trump supporters who still won't call him a, this a scam, even though they think crypto is a scam, or they'll claim the whole thing is a lie made up by the left. <laughs> um, our Journey Together cookbook. You might be the lucky winner that receives one of the President Donald J. Trump's best-selling books, 
Our Journey Together, this gorgeous coffee table book is complete with memories shared by Donald himself. Some of the books will be hand-signed by the president. 18 holes of golf at the Trump Golf Course. All of Trump's golf courses are exclusive, and an opportunity to play 18 holes at one of his locations doesn't come along very often for just anyone. But if you're the lucky winner of this prize, you and three friends will have the opportunity to play one of his perfectly manicured courses. Donald J. Trump will not join you for this prize. <laughs> Gnome Pickle says, can any of these be printed out onto some of the files he still legally has? Might be a good way to get those back into the right hands. <laughs> Oh. Mystery prizes of Trump memorabilia. A few lucky winners will receive mystery prizes. What is it? Even though we can't recall what the prizes are, we or reveal, we can tell you you'll be happy to receive this mystery prize if you're a President Donald J. Trump fan. Dinner for two at Trump International Hotel in Las Vegas. You get it. Dinner for two at Trump Mar-a-Lago. Also, Donald A. Trump will not join you for these prizes. Dinner for two at Trump Tower in New York. Same deal. <laughs> oh man, they take Visa, Discover Card, MasterCard, and American Express. Wow, how nice. <laughs> Let's look at their Truth Social account. Oh my god. They have 118 followers on Truth Social. Beautiful. Yes, I have a Truth Social account. It's only for following Peter. <laughs> the mystery prizes are folders that say top secret SCI, aren't they? <laughs> they ask all winners to promptly burn any files they are given. <laughs> How is Peter doing? Peter says, as of 18 hours ago, COVID vaccine documentary is on track to release this month. <laughs> oh boy, exciting. Ugh. I want to look at your NFTs, but I do not want to enter an email at all. Did someone said they had a store um, on OpenSea? Why don't I have burners? I don't know. There we go. Yeah, they're on OpenSea. That's fine. <laughs> we can look at them on OpenSea. Exciting, isn't it? I'm going to be honest, I think this one's pretty fucking lazy. <laughs> oh my god, look at it. Look at him. Oh no! Ah! <laughs> He's an NFT character! Oh no! It's, as it's worse than I thought. It's all generative art. Oh no. No, no, no. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, these are lazy even by NFT standards, which is saying so much. Oh, my God. This took like an hour to throw together. Holy shit, that's so funny. How desperate is Donald Trump for money? Ooh, this one, he has a crypto head, though. That's that makes it rare. He is a crypto punk head. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Let's look at price high to low, shall we? What are the highest priced ones? Just curious. Wait, so I'm assuming these are just ones that some people set up. This person is trying to sell this one for 6,666 Ethereum, which is... <laughs> That's $8 billion. <laughs> they listed this one for sale for $8 billion. No, 
I'm sorry. It's million. Eight million. I misread it. That's better. But still, damn. Eight million? I'm right-click saving this one. Fuck. Oh, I can't right-click save. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Snipping tool. <laughs> oh no, I'm stealing an eight million dollar piece of art. Someone stop me. Snipping tool. Snipping tool. Doesn't matter if you don't want me to save it. I'm gonna snip it, cause if it displays on my monitor, then it is mine. Fuck you. Stealing your NFT. Uh, anyway, so that's mine now. Does anyone want to buy it from me? I'll sell it to you for $4 million. That's like a 50% discount. <laughs> that's not even the most expensive one. This person's trying to sell this one for $15 million, and it's just Donald Trump welding, which he definitely doesn't know how to do. I don't think he's certified. <sighs> Why? Why are they- ch this person's trying to get a million for this one. What the fuck? I'm trying to see how much they bought this for. They're trying to get a million dollars for this one and they bought it. They bought it for $300 and they're trying to get a million dollars. I wish them luck with that. I wish them great luck trying to... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, this scam would have maybe made more sense when the NFT, like, craze was, like, big. Like, months ago, like, at the beginning of the year, last... Whenever it was, you know, when, when, when stuff was, like, in a frenzy of companies basically wash trading and other idiot rich people buying them to try and spike the price maybe you could have gotten away with this but like nfts everyone knows they're a scam now everyone knows they're a scam i don't understand how they think they're gonna get away with this it's just no one no one's gonna buy them i don't get it so that's the Trump NFT collection. Let's take a look at some of the reactions from the people on the greatawakening.win website. If you don't know what this is, this is a website where people who are conspiracy theorists who believe in QAnon, by the way, I should put my disclaimer up because we are on this website. Um, <clears throat> they believe that Donald Trump is secretly working with a group of uh, aliens or like white hat hackers or something to save the government from a secret group of like Satan worshiping baby eaters. It's a crazy conspiracy theory. Anyway, when it was announced that, oh, I'm going to do a major announcement on Thursday, <laughs> they thought, oh, this is finally it. Donald Trump is going to announce it's time for the storm or he's going to announce that he's secretly the president. And then he announces an NFT collection Let's see how they felt about this. And I thought I had been properly trained to keep low expectations. I must train harder. <laughs> uh, read the last sentence again. When do you play the trump card? Oh, snap. So they're going to um, an old Q drop. If you know what a Q drop is. There's one from 2018 that says Trump card coming. So they're trying to say that these NFTs are Trump cards and that it's been 1700 days since that post was made. So it's a signal because it was 1700 days since someone said Trump card and now he's doing NFTs that he compared to trading cards. In case you're wondering how the mind rot is going over in Q land. <laughs> this person says, is this a joke? <laughs> this person says, 
This is obviously a 5D chess kind of move. This is about the next generation. Buy these action hero cards for your kids and grandkids. It gives them someone to look up to and emulate. It'll help offset the CRT <laughs> and garbage they're learning at school. President Trump is the man to be admiring. These will go along really well with my flags, books, and bumper stickers. I really hope they are able to make some cards for other patriots like Lynn Wood, Mike Lindell, General Flynn, Mike Pence, and of course, our wonderful First Lady Melania Trump. Heck, we should get the whole Trump family too, maybe in a limited release collectible edition as long as they don't print too many. These will gain value faster than gold. <laughs> That almost feels like someone from the company that's making the NFT is trying to shill for the project. <laughs> Who's your friend says, as soon as you think they can't get any lower, Amaga, um, Amaga Herbs grabs a shovel and starts digging. You cannot be serious. $99 trading cards that are just digital? You can just take a screenshot of a picture of Trump and do the same thing. There is only one thing these NFTs are sure to do, and that's depreciate in value. And someone says, you don't understand NFTs. <laughs> now I think they understand NFTs perfectly fine. I think in some ways, this is a test of loyalty. After President Trump purges out the swamp, there will be a ton of open positions to fill with loyal patriots. Owning one of these cards or some of John McNaughton Trump legacy NFTs will show that you believe in President Trump and a greater America. I'm sure when the openings come, owning one of these will basically guarantee you a job. I'm really hoping I can get a job as someone like Secretary of the Interior. I love getting out in nature, but I would be content with Lieutenant Governor or something equivalent. <laughs> this person thinks that buying an NFT will get them a job as the Secretary of Interior because they like being out in nature. <laughs> I assume they have no qualifications for that title. MH Dark Beast, thanks for 31 months, says Trump NFTs or just shitty digital JPEGs. That one superhero one looks like the worst who wants to be a superhero candidate. The one who gets bullied by everyone else. Who boy. I would judge this as a very counter this as very counterproductive for anyone who's been trying to wake up normies for the last five to six years. Coming on the heels of fake polls that have his favorability tanking, this is a gift to the deep state. By the way, what are the resources being wasted on this? Voss and Raven says, yes, I'm definitely not a plant for the NFT company. By the way, these cards will get you a job with the government. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing if there's anything else. No way, there's got to be something else we're going on we're not seeing yet. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's so... So that's it. That's Donald Trump's. That's Donald Trump's NFT collection. It's bad. Surprise. I mean, Sharkby says, uh, did you show the shitty commercial for the cards? Oh, yeah, that was the first thing we did. Is there anything else on the front page that we need to see? I don't think so. Oh, if you want to see him in higher. There's that. We'll scroll through for a second for posterity purposes. Now you could screenshot this video and these two could be yours. All right, moving on. Oh, what is the refund policy? All sales of Trump digital trading cards are fi final. Surprise. <sighs> I 
Okay. <laughs> so here's BitBoy Crypto, since we're moving on to other crypto bullshit now. Um, BitBoy Crypto, apparently, who is a crypto influencer of some kind, is getting visits from the SEC, and I don't think he's taking it very seriously. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the people's channel. I've been crying all night. I don't know if you can tell from my voice. A lot going on right now, guys. Uh, very... <sighs> very concerned. Very concerned. I got a letter from the SEC last night. Don't know how long it had been uh, sitting, uh, waiting for me to get back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Terrified right now. Gary Gensler has now came knocking at my door, wanting documents. Very scared, Gary. I'm very scared. <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, yeah, so I did get a letter from the SEC. This is true, actually. Uh, I'm obviously not scared. My voice is a little jacked up from uh, being at all these parties in Miami this week and how do you? Uh, if I got a letter from the SEC, I would shit my pants. I speak over uh, loud music. Um, before I tell you what it's about, uh, we are gonna have our lawyers look at it because it's just standard practice. It's what you should do. And I want other influencers to understand while the SEC is low IQ and Gary Gensler is a lizard person, if you do get a letter from the SEC, you sh thinly veiled anti-Semitism on the bingo card should have an attorney look over it. And unfortunately, a lot of people that would get letters, uh, you know, they, they may not be in the same financial uh, position that I'm in or that some other people are in. And, uh, you know, it's going to cost you money just to have a lawyer look at it. We fortunately have many lawyers on staff um, or not necessarily on staff, but on retainer, because that's what you do when you have a big business. We aren't doing bingo. I was just joking. <laughs> but in an emerging uh, technology. Uh, sector, uh, like finance or, or whatever the case may be. So uh, here is my reaction. <clears throat> I will start by giving you my reaction to the SEC letter from Gary Gensler. <laughs> That's my reaction. <coughs> that second one was a real cough. Uh, guys, uh, I ain't scared. <laughs> I don't know if people can tell. Uh, these people are scammers. Uh, Gary Gensler is a scammer. Uh, and you know what? I, I think if you really look at what the SEC is doing right now, uh, they are trying to rule by enforcement. And I will tell you this. I don't think it's a coincidence, okay? Uh, I'll tell you this. Trying to rule by enforcement. You think that a government enforcement agency is trying to rule by enforcement, which is their job to enforce financial securities law <laughs> what i don't think it's a coincidence that we people are going to see our bill we have the funding for the bill the bill's going to be coming out soon we're super excited about it can't wait to show it to you who who is our bill in direct opposition to the sec our bill is direct opposition against the sec sam bateman freed had been meeting with gary gensler for six months okay if you guys watched my video yesterday I i'm telling you guys our bill not that it's passed already is not even public yet sending our bill to ftx for funding is what triggered the entire thing the entire reveal of the insolvency of ftx it triggered the whistleblower uh to, to send the documents to the places he sent it to uh, to the place that the whistleblower sent it to, um, <clears throat> uh, including CZ, including CoinDesk. All this was triggered by Sam and Mark Wetjen of FTX reading our bill. They're terrified of it. They've been working for six months with the, FT with the SEC in order to control crypto. So I'm assuming this guy is working with lobbyists to try and push forward a bill to keep crypto from being regulated, and Sam Bankman-Fried, who was working with the SEC and other regulators to help develop more proper regulations for crypto, ironically, considering he was doing a scam the entire time and he's now in jail, um, I think awaiting to be extradited to the United States from the Bahamas. Either way, you think you are being targeted by the SEC for working with lobbyists to write a bill i don't think so it's probably because you're in crypto 
And crypto is scamming people, in my opinion. And guess what? They get our bill and they see our supporters. We know because they try to steal one. And they go, oh, crap. Like, we need to get moving on this. Or... Or when you say bill, do you mean that you think FTX owes you money for something and you are saying you are sending them a bill to be considered during their bankruptcy proceedings? And you think that because you are asking for money from Sam Bankman frieds now defunct company that the SEC is targeting you because they had previously worked with him on regulation issues. That makes no fucking sense. <laughs> Raven says, and they don't even effectively regulate markets like they're, they're supposed to. The people who are in committees meant to do so have jobs waiting for them or are former employees of people like Goldman Sachs. Thank Bill Clinton for that. Yeah, it's fucked up. The SEC is... Um, and it's been regulatory captured, uh, basically. It's fucked up. Hawthorne, with 14 months, says, Today was a good day. My car finally came back from the garage after a month with a new clutch, new gearbox, and a new suspension. Yes, it is 18 years old, but she gets me where I need to be, and I love it. Nice. We are screwed. All this work we've been putting in with, Gary, with Dirty Gary Gensler at the SEC is going to be for naught. So, uh, there are forces working with us higher than Gary Gensler. I'll tell you that uh, we we have had some level of contact with the highest offices in the land. If that makes sense to you, so we're gonna find out. We we have not been playing games while while people have been out there memeing and uh, you know uh, intentionally attacking me and have you know long haired uh, you know hippies uh, pretending to be liberals that I actually know are super super conservative. Actually, uh, uh, you know. You have these YouTubers with these big followings making all these videos, you know, trying to trying to be these, like, you know, liberal patsies and stuff. Uh, but in reality, I know that this person gives a ton of money to conservative, uh, you know, <clears throat> conservative policies, which is fine. I'm conservative. But, you know, you, you got a lot of these people out there faking and pretending right now trying to make me look bad. And uh, why is this? It's because we are attacking and we are going at some of the highest people in the country who want to control some of the most corrupt people in the country that want to control your money. They want to control your tax dollars. They, they want to control your crypto investments. They want to control your... They're the SEC. Their entire role is to regulate securities. Good. They should be doing that to protect consumers. If crypto is going to exist, which it shouldn't, it's entirely a fucking scam. But if you insist for some reason that it exists, then it needs to be regulated to protect idiots from getting scammed by pieces of shit like you. <laughs> you fucking loser. Retirements, portfolios. That's what they want. They don't want you to be able to have a dream to change your life. It's not what they want. <clears throat> Me, what we're working for is common sense regulation allows crypto to have a seat at the table so that we can move to a new digital economy. It's fair for everybody. That's what we're doing. The economy is already digital. Most money that goes from place to place on a daily basis is not cash. It is digitally done. It can be done without crypto. It should be done without crypto. Crypto is incredibly stupid to use for any kind of currency or frankly, even an asset or security. It's really fucking stupid. There's no reason to use it over any other way to define currency or securities in a digital form. There is no reason to have it be done the way it is done. It's dumb. Stop it. So, I just want to look deep into the... To the... Um, no, this guy is not Sam Bankman Freed. This is BitBoy who actually hates... Sam Bankman Freed. Sam Bankman Freed was the head of the second largest crypto exchange, FTX, um, which recently went bankrupt after it was found that they were insolvent and had been basically stealing um, funds from some of their customers to gamble on risky stuff with a related company called Alameda, which is a company that was owned also by Sam Bankman Freed. Um, so he's basically taking money from the crypto bank over here, people whose money was not supposed to be taken, and their terms of service explicitly said their money would not be used for investing purposes. He took it, boop, put it over here. In fact, I shouldn't even say that. That's implying that there was ever a time when there were separate buckets. 
There's one big bucket of funds on it for Sam Bankman Freed, okay? And he tells people, don't worry, your money's not going to be used for investment. It's going to be in a separate account to make sure that yours is always protected and we always have a certain number of reserves for people to withdraw their crypto funds. And over here, he has a company that's for investment, basically a crypto hedge fund, right? Where he's investing in shit coins, okay? He took all the money and put it into one big bowl and was using everyone's money, even the people who said that they didn't want their money invested and just wanted it as a bank account. He took their money and stole it and used it to invest and then lost it. Okay? So this guy lost like 8 to 12 billion dollars of other people's money? <laughs> He's fucked. He's fucked. But we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. He just recently got arrested in the last week. Sending our bill to FTX for funding is what triggered the entire thing, the entire reveal of the insolvency of FTX. It triggered the whistleblower uh, to, to send the documents to the places he sent it to, uh, to or to the places the, the whistleblower sent it to, um, <clears throat> uh, including CZ, including Coindesk. All this was triggered by Sam and Raven says Sam Bankman Freed looks like a nerdy makeup list Robert Smith from The Cure. Now you can't unsee it. I don't know what that person looks like. So I can't see it. Mark Wetgen of FTX reading our bill. They're terrified of it. They've been working for six months with the, FT with the SEC in order to control crypto. And guess what? They get our bill and they see our supporters. We know because they try to steal one. And they go, oh, crap. Like, we need to get moving on this or we are screwed. All this work we've been putting in with Gary, with Dirty Gary Gensler at the SEC is going to be for naught. So... You're working with a guy named Dirty Gary Gensler and you wonder why the SEC might want to regulate crypto? <laughs> Dirty Gary Gensler. Are we the baddies? Uh, Canadian Unicorn says, just got here. What are we watching today? Crypto cringe. Uh, there are forces working with us higher than Gary Gensler. I'll tell you that. Uh, we, we have had some level of contact with... Oh, Gary Gensler's the head of the SEC. That makes so much more sense that he's demonizing someone and not calling an ally Dirty Gary. <laughs> the highest office is in the land, if that makes sense to you. People are going to find out, we, we have not been playing games. While, while people have been out there memeing and, uh, you know, uh, intentionally attacking me and have, you know, long-haired, uh, you know, hippies uh, pretending to be liberals that I actually know are super, super conservative, actually. Uh, uh, you know, you have these YouTubers with these big followings, making all these videos, you know, trying to, trying to be these, like, you know, liberal patsies and stuff. Uh, but in reality, I know that this person gives a ton of money to conservative. Uh, of you. We're taking your power. I hope you're ready for that. I want to control your money. They want to control your tax dollars. They, they want to control your crypto. They're the government. Investment. And also the SEC doesn't determine like what happens with your tax dollars. That's Congress. They want to control your retirements, portfolios. That's what they want. They don't want you to be able to have a dream to change your life. It's not what they want. <clears throat> Me, what we're working for is common sense regulation. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I accidentally hit a button and skipped back to the beginning and then tried to find the place and I started way too early. I apologize. We're well, almost done with this video though. How's crypto to have a seat at the table so that we can move to a new digital economy? It's fair for everybody. That's what we're doing. So I just want to look deep into the to the soulless eyes of Gary Gensler and tell him, come at me. I'm not scared of you. We're taking your power. I hope you're ready for that. You're going to take on the SEC. Good luck. So I'll say the same thing I told Sam. Get ready, bud. Get ready. So that's it, guys. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, probably by Monday or Tuesday, we'll make public uh, what this is over. It's ridiculous. If you, It's just another example of wasted taxpayer dollars, wasted money from the SEC, trying to collect a check, and that's all it has to do with. So we're, I'll tell you this. I'm concerned. Did I hear uh, Jake Paul's a flat earther? Is he doing a bit? 
the Island Boys are in serious debt. That's funny. Well, it seems like the run for the Island Boys is coming to an end. They pissed off the entire internet, racked up insane amounts of debt to various managers, and to add the cherry on top, they're being sued by multiple entities. So how did the Island Boys ship sink so quickly? First, if you don't know who they are, picture two cavities in human form and you're pretty much there. Overall, they're just unpleasant and annoying, but the Island Boy duo essentially consists of Kodiak Red and a guy named Fly Soldier. They're two SoundCloud rappers from South Florida. And roughly nine months ago, they blew up on TikTok and there was a video of them sitting in a hot tub previewing their new upcoming song island boy i can't play that clip here because as you can see by the title of this video if i give them any reason to claim it they're going to but this hot tub acapella gave them plenty of opportunities including an insane cameo career which is this website where fans can pay creators to make short small personalized videos so they started making hundreds of thousands of dollars off a of cameo and where did that money go well on some johnny dang teeth because they wanted to be the first people in their hometown with some johnny any dang teeth because I guess who needs financial literacy when you have some overpriced diamonds on your teeth they also had a cameo in one of Oliver Tree's music videos and then went on to the no jumper and impulsive podcast and managed to piss off the entire internet but the whole situation on the impulsive podcast that really made them come across as a joke to everyone god forbid it doesn't go in your guys's direction for real oh. I think you guys take all of your jewelry assets and invest in something so you guys will <laughs> never ever be broke again so I don't think there's ever going to be a broke situation. But I'm saying, like, if you guys... Sure is it can't be worth that much, man. I don't think you're going to flip that into yeah. a retirement. No, you could definitely <laughs> flip their yeah. jewelry into a down damn, payment or something. Why, let me sure. Why, let me tell you something. George, stop talking. We have multiple... <laughs> Wait, that was... Oh. Yeah. Hey, that was, got, that was nah, for you doing... guys. Yeah, you, <laughs> that wasn't like a hate I don't, shot. I don't need, I don't yeah. need financial yeah, advice when I probably make more money than you. But that was me being nice. It wasn't me being like... I could be... I could turn it off and be like... To go talk Being to somebody else, it's not going to go in your favor. But look. Oh my God, the island boys are the worst. Oh no. Island boy removed diamond teeth out of desperation for money. All right, so I haven't talked about these jits in a while. Just the chance. Good Lord. What the hell? Ugh. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, here's a guy at NFT London, which is a, believe it or not, an NFT uh, conference in London. Yo, it's cool times, gang gang to my cats. Sup to all my dogs. We're here at NFT London. We're gonna go to some of the parties. We're gonna talk to the builders. We're gonna talk to the people who are still tapped in. Like, comment, subscribe. I asked Pranksy for a board ape, but he said, you know what, instead, I'll give you a bus ride around London. Let's go, boys. My biggest dream as an NFT trader is zero gas. We actually have it here at NFT London with my guy Cena. What is this NFT vending machine? So my NFT is the NFT marketplace and we're launching today. So the whole mission of my NFT is to create a more accessible NFT ecosystem. Because right now there's so many friction points to owning an NFT. You buy one for £10, uh, it's all going to charity and um, you get a random NFT worth up to $1,000. So you don't need crypto, you don't need a wallet, you basically sign in, it just drops, you scan the QR code, you sign in. Okay, so all you've done is you gave people a code on your website that says they own an NFT. It's like an NFT of an NFT. You've basically given someone an NFT of an NFT where you're like, okay, like we're gonna we're gonna hold on to the file in our internal system and you definitely have it via a sign in on our internal website, but like you don't have a wallet with it or anything because our entire thing is you don't have a wallet to hold it in. Oh my god. Oh I scanned the QR? Yeah. Raven says him asking for a bored ape and being offered a bus ride is Star Trek chess levels of irony. Um, um, Tea with Goblin says, 
London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sign up? Yeah. Okay, I right. don't need to do a wallet integration or anything. Okay. I see how you guys are doing it. All right. NFT London, Genesis Empire, handshake emoji. I'm with the team right now. Tell us a little bit about the project. Just mint it out. Let's Things go. So we're outside the Pranksy bus. Pranksy didn't give you an ape. Well, didn't give me an ape as well. So you know we're right here. But yeah, we're just talking about like the Genesis Empire, and you know it's a story-based NFT, 777 supply. So it's quite limited. Uh, Story-based NFT. Uh, we're currently at like 0.1 min ETH, but you know, we got animation behind it, we got crazy utility behind it. Storytelling NFT is the meta right now, so we're here with the storytelling NFT and you know, that's, that's why it is. So, Absolutely, yeah. and this is what it's all about because they're out here shaking hands, meeting people. You saw a project like D-Gods on Solana go parabolic. It's because Frank was showing up doing Twitter spaces, shaking hands, meeting people. <laughs> These are the founders who are doing the legwork so, right now. You know what project I fucking hate? Creature World. I'm bored, bro. And I'm hungry. Wait. Get a video of me and Liam pretending like we're laughing. This is one of the biggest collabs you've ever seen. Okay, this is like if the NBA came over to to M like you know to Europe, Premier League soccer. I'm here with my guy NFT Zerk. We're here at NFT what? actually <laughs> at his event, but thought I'd grab it. Tea with Goblin says, "Did you just say handshake emoji instead of actually shaking hands?" I hate him. For a couple of beers, a couple of cigs. You know, here's the main guy we was inviting. So as soon as he's here, we don't need to be in the event anymore, right? So uh, yeah, here for you, bro. And we're here to make some Web3 content. The, the real important thing, guys, is look, are people flipping NFTs for huge profit right now? No. But there are so many more avenues of web Look, is the entire reason that we wanted to get into this scam happening? No, but... Web3, whether it's, you know, having an agency, whether it's being a collab manager, collab managers are making a killing right we, now. We have guys in Zerpas making 15 grand a month, printing money, doing collabs for other projects, new projects that are releasing. It's a big bulk of what we do at Unblocks too, so a lot of partnerships. There's something to be said for, and I've talked about this before, the effect of um, shovel sales during a gold rush, and that is to say that during a gold rush, you make more money selling shovels to people looking for gold than you do actually looking for gold. You t make more money on people trying to get rich than you do on actually trying to get rich because, you know... Uh... I feel like there's another truism that should go along with that, and that is... Once the gold rush ends, but there are still desperate people... After you've already so sold them the shovel, you can maybe sell them a dowsing rod, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like, if there's still people desperate, but there isn't any gold even, you can sell them on scams as to how to get back to the place where there is gold, you know what I mean? I feel like that's where NFT is right now. We're done selling shovels, we're selling dowsing rods, because we're all desperately hoping for another, like, bull run for no reason. Um, Gnome Pickle says, years ago we had a man scam people by selling land in a fictional country to idiots and desperate people. Now we sell comic cells to people claiming they have worth. Something has been lost in the work ethic of scammers. Um, and Red Werewolf says, apparently some of the Trump NFTs are just photoshopped stolen product pictures. Shocking. I'm shocked. <laughs> That's beautiful. Truly. Where did it go? There it is. Loves leveraging our network, bringing in brands to the web free space and distribution. Let's talk about that. The importance of brands working with web three native people like unorthodox. So, you know, it's it's been really cringy when like I can't even think of one. But like let's say, you know, Budweiser does an NFT drop. And it's like they tweet GM and they tweet like WGMI and it's a five, you know, point five ETH mint price. Yeah. They need people like Zerk yeah. to help, you know, massage connections. Fuck this middle guy. We'll help you directly. We're introducing to everyone, and we'll be honest. We're not going to be like, let's go and sell a five ETH project out tomorrow. It's like, no, let's 
work sensibly, let's analyze the market and actually tell you what is possible and what's needed. Yeah, you, you need a correct strategy. And like Reddit did things the absolute right way because they worked with crypto native artists that, you know, like. The Reddit crypto things are awful and lost money. They're like not, they're underwater. What? Raven says, have you ever heard of the Dutch tulip mania? It's literally the same concept except with tulips. It happened back in the 1600s. Um, I'd liken this to that. Oh yeah, that's that's a very common way of explaining bubbles. An NFT is a textbook bubble. <laughs> Fatty bags, people who had uh, cachet within the Web3 community. Yeah. I I'm in the same boat as you, man. Like I want a Coca-Cola. Give me a check. I'll run your whole NFT thing. Home Depot. And if, and if the desperation. Please, Coke. Home Depot. Menards. I don't even care. Just give me a job. If you want to be a part of the difference or learn more about Web3, honestly, I would watch a lot of this guy when I first... Companies aren't making money with NFTs. You know what would solve that problem? If they gave me a job and gave me money. First got in the Web3 space. It's Zerk. He's got the Zerk Pass. Podcast with Tom? Podcast, yeah. Unorthodox podcast that's starting. We need to get you on. We need to get you on as a I'm right. Guest. I'm right here, coach. Put yeah. me in the game. <laughs> Tag me in. All right, my guy Liam, holding it down at NFT London. We're doing it the proper way. Cool Cheers, time. mate. Legends, not my drink, but fuck it. <laughs> All right, I'm with my boy Hydrays. You guys know him from OCB Alpha, or you just know him from Twitter because he's always dropping gems. Let's just talk about the NFT market right now. How have you been playing it right now? Obviously, we saw Art Gobblers was a huge liquidity play. Crazy. What, what about on the smaller end? How are yeah, you it's tough. It's, really, it's tough at the moment. Like, it's definitely hard. Um, you've got to get in early. You've got to find those good products. Projects with good teams. Find projects early, whitelist? Yeah, whitelist. I mean, I've been staying away. I do a lot of like DJ plays normally when the volume's high in the market. DJ plays. They've been in content for a long time, man. We've been in this space for a while. Yeah, okay. It seems like, you know, the bear market's gotten a hold of us. The vibes are down. It's a lot of negativity. You've been a positive guy, man. Talk me off the ledge, man. What does the NFT space look like going forward in the next couple months, dude? Lawson Raven says, give me a check, payments, and dirty, dirty fiat. Guess someone's not going to the moon. Do we have some positive shit? This is, okay, so we are on Oxford Street right now. We are Oxford Street, right? Yeah. This is this is the busiest street in London. Uh, this is where all the, like, retail locations are, the biggest shops in the world, like, on this, like, we have Nike Town down there. Now, if we're talking about vibes, like, two meters behind you, downstairs, there's a lot of vibes, right? <laughs> there's a lot of, we, we have found, we've got the founders of Hate. So Hate Beast, if you guys remember that one. Creeps, we have Sappy Seals, we've got Popeye, we've got RT, we've got names that you guys know about. We've got the guy behind you. Yeah, even they admit the market's bad right now. Um, Phantom of uh, Freaks, thanks for two months. Okay, fucking right. baby! So you're saying I shouldn't back away from the ledge, don't panic, we're gonna be okay? Fuck. Yeah. So let's let's talk about why why you're here, man. Like today, so we are doing a party for an like an actual in real life. Like actually, this shit exists already. It is one of the fastest fastest growing alcohol brands in the world. Downstairs, who is co-sponsoring this party? Guess what? They're launching an NFT project to help curate experiences for their best fans and biggest fans and customers. That sounds like a fucking thing that could be lasting a long time, right? What? No, it doesn't. What does that even mean? Guys, you said words that meant nothing. Call me the Bradley Cooper of NFTs. I'm calling him the John Holmes of NFTs. What does the Bradley Cooper of NFT mean? He's got an eight inch dick and he's got an 80s porn star mustache. No one talks about dick more than straight dudes. Follow oh my guy, let's go. <laughs> Jake Thony, thanks for nine months. Is this a sub baby? It is indeed. It is indeed. Um, this sub baby's name is going to be not fully tangerine. Not fully tangerine is the name of this baby.
Okay guys, Web3 events apparently aren't just burgers anymore. MoonPay partnered up with Cameo Pass along with Nocturnal Soray, Toby Lasso, Matt Morgan, all came together. Really cool party here. Some great musicians. Every single Web2 Instagram musician or photographer or artist, they want to transition over to Web3. So if you want to create- No they don't! What are you talking about? Have you talked to any artist or musician ever on the internet? They all hate NFTs and crypto. What the fuck are you talking about? A Web3 agency? Use the knowledge you're getting right now and start onboarding people who need expert advice in Web3. So that's kind of what we're doing here at this cafe, just meeting up with Web2 people and showing them Web3. Let's go. Okay, our goss, thanks for 27 months, says time for a tiny furniture being stolen by aliens to be the older sibling. <laughs> um, let's see, um... This baby's name is Needly Fried Tomatoes. Needly Fried Tomatoes. Dr. Okay guys, Project Yin Yang Party here at NFT London. Don't know what to expect. Let's get into it. Raven says, I deal with enough racist accusing me of blackwashing for doing edits. I don't need the chud NFT audience to add to that. Oof. Yeah. Singapore, always connecting. Okay, the only downside of being at NFT London is that when I say you have to take your dick out if you want to fuck NFTs, it's really cold out here, so- I'm sorry, what? The only I gotta replay that, I'm sorry. I'm asking my wife something. downside of being at NFT London is that when I say you have to take your dick out if you want to fuck NFTs, it's really cold out here, so my dick is actually extremely shriveled, so I can't have like that mass <laughs> people walking by. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, they, they didn't like that. They don't like grandma's old saying, but we're about to go to Toby Lasso and Vinny Hager's NFT event. At a really cool venue here in London. Gonna check it out, have a couple drinks. This one might be a little while. Let's go. Good company. Shout out Jordan and the Hotel Soiree crew. Welcome to London number one. This is Toby Lasso. Hello. 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 All of your wives are inferior to my wife. <laughs> I have one thing to say, and that is, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's two years, whether it's five years, the blockchain is taking over. Yeah. Go get yourself a wife. Yeah. Go buy some amazing art from some of the most amazing artists you've ever seen. They're building on a platform of the future. Hang out with your friends. I love you. Thank you so much for coming. And happy birthday, George. Okay, you know that Shia LaBeouf thing where it says, just do it! Well, we're gonna bridge the gap together. Nocturnal soiree event was fun. We're gonna go to sleep. I think we have a couple things tomorrow, but this is London, it's raining. I texted you about, I'm huh? drunk, By the way. I'm high, and I'm sniper game! <laughs>
Oh, good news. Decentraland will now let you become a virtual landlord. Owners of Decentraland virtual land NFTs can now rent out their property on the platform. Renters pay each day using Nana, the platform's main cryptocurrency. Virtual World Platform Decentraland now allows landowners to rent out their property. The new system lets owners of Decentraland NFTs called Land Parcels to find tenants in what the company says is, secu is a secure, trustless process. Virtual landowners can establish the cost of renting per day and the desired duration of the lease. And the tenants pays the owner through MANA, Decentraland's main cryptocurrency. Once the rental period expires, the virtual landlord must manually decide whether to claim their property or put it up for rent again. Decentraland said a potential use case for this system would be a virtual DJ who could rent a space as a nightclub for performances. Chibahawk with 50 bits says mana equals money. Actually, not actually. <laughs> The Decentraland Foundation, which oversees the platform, will store the owner and tenant data off-chain as well as on the Ethereum blockchain. Rentable land, or the virtual kind, has been possible since June through ERC-4907, the Ethereum standard that allows rentable NFTs. Unlike Decentraland's rental system, this token stand allows... This token standard allows land to automatically revert back to the owner once the rental period expires. While the token standard can be applied to items beyond just virtual spaces, the firm behind the standard's creation, Double Protocol, told the block that it envisions metaverse land rentals as the key markets for renewable NFTs, or rather, rentable NFTs, sorry. The average cost of Decentraland's parcel is about $2,380, making it one of the more valuable land plots compared to Sandbox, NFT Worlds, and other Web3 virtual worlds according to the Blocks Data Dashboard. Oh my god. Can you imagine being a fucking crypto digital NFT land landlord? <laughs> or renting an NFT? Why? Agebeard says the real money is in selling crypto weaponry so you can conquer other people's digital land. <laughs> One sec. One sec, buddy. Or... I think Baja is going to be upset with my text because she asked me what I wanted for dinner and I listed like five options. <laughs> I'm not a decisive beach. <laughs> oh. This is the most expensive trading card product I've ever opened. I if we can't figure it out, then, then chat, you'll help us decide what's for dinner. I've been collecting cards my whole life and I've never opened to anything quite like this. This is a sealed case, four boxes of 2022 Zero Cool V Friends Series 1. Some people hate on this product, it's got very mixed reviews. Some people don't understand the whole Gary V, Josh Luber, Zero Cool NFT trading card thing. And you know. They're NFT trading cards. They're the Gary V V Friends project. You no, know, I understand some of the hate, but at the same time too, look, if V Friends does happen to catch on in the long term, this product could be worth so much just because of how rare it is. They only made 1,000 boxes of this product, 250 cases. We've got one of them here. So we're literally opening like 0.4% of the entire print run today. Uh, this says 20,000 case of V Friends Series 1 trading cards. Now, is it valued at that much, or did he pay $20,000 for these? 
Occult Comics says, My plan is to become Crypto William Wallace and conquer the digital landscape with digital swords and become a digital land digital lord so I can digi the digivolution is up and running. Digi see? Digi hear? Digi know? What's coming up? Our digi destiny starts today. Let me hear you say, Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. With Digi Will and Digi, with, I don't, I don't remember the tune for the rest of it. With Digi Will and Digi Vice in hand, there's a Digi dynamic force in Digi Land. Voss, <laughs> Voss and Raven says, no, 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 not Gary V. No, please, cruel and unusual punishment. Looking for autographs, one of ones, sketch cards. Uh, what else? These are the NFTs, by the way. Gary V draws these himself in about 30 seconds and sells them for thousands and thousands of dollars. It's definitely not a scam, though. Sorry, Logarth, I may have missed your bits message. Said, um, people did that in Second Life. There are blocks of land called Sims. They cost like 1500 to set one up, but you have 100% control over it with no neighbors. People develop plots on them and build really cool-looking homes, buildings, and rent them out. A person named Anchi Chung made like two million real actual dollars doing that and had like a thousand sims she managed. At least Second Life was a real video game that people played, though. Decentraland only exists as a speculative opportunity. Oogle74, thanks for 26 months. It's been a while. It has indeed. Good to see ya. What are we looking for? We're looking for, oh, the uh, black one of one access tokens. If we could hit one of those, that'd be sweet. And I think without further ado, I mean, let's get into the case. That's why you're here, right? Here it is. These are underwhelming packaging wise. Like this is the, this is the whole thing really for four grand. Four grand. If anyone wants to buy a pack of cards for four grand, I have- I can go get you cards. I can get you cards! Okay, let's do it. We'll see the first one probably right away. I got them all. Intuitive Iguana. Unfortunately, that is a duplicate. Logarth with 50 bits says, Second Life also had a huge furry population, so does VR Chat. I know, I've been on VR Chat. And uh, me, OSVR Meta, and all these other jokes do not. It's a really good indicator. Yeah, that's true. If the furries are there, it'll probably work. If the furries don't show up, you're probably fucked. Right off of the bat. That's actually a good litmus test. Does your program allow people to cosplay or pretend to be their furry characters, their fursona? If so, and there aren't furries there, you have fucked up. Because furries will absolutely take the opportunity to be their fursonas. <laughs> if you have a program that lets them. Then we have... How do I want to do this? I'll, I'll just go left to right pretty simply. Gracious Grasshopper, that is a new one for me. Now, some of these you'll you'll see, like, I'll, I'll probably call them out as they happen. Some of these are significantly more valuable than others. Like, we're looking for, you know, a patient panda or... Valuable, air quote. A rare robot or things like that are per quite valuable, actually. So our next one is a rare. So there's base, rare, very rare. I don't know, there's a bunch of variations here, but that just means we have one numbered eight with a rare is a passionate parrot. Holy shit, passionate parrot. Okay, I'm just gonna do this from the top to see what we have coming up each time. So we have another rare, this one is three of eight. Base cards are limited to 22, by the way. Sweet Swan. So I uh, don't have any- Did his kid draw these? No, he did it himself. That one, but for what it's worth, I I'm only collecting the base cards, so the rare doesn't really do anything for me. Next, we have a very rare number to five. And that is the Hoddle, Hodel, Hoddle Hyena. Why is that one very rare? That's the worst one so far. Um, I think this is one of the better ones. I mean, there's obviously like a big community of like, you know, hodlers out there. Um, so, you know, fine with that. Now we probably have a one of one coming up next, I would believe. This one's actually, I believe, the number to two. Okay, so we have a two of two. 
The, the ones limited to two are quite rare. It's a bunch of one of one variations, but there's only one variation limited to two. Let's see if we can get a good one here. Ponder it from all angles. That's an interesting one. That's one that's not really like a uh, animal. Most of these are animals, but some of them are just Gary V's, whatever. I think we might have a good one here. Let's see what this is. This is a diamond one of one. So that's probably gonna be our big card in this box. Let's see. Lungard says stuff I drew in textbooks in middle school. NFTs? Oh yeah. What we've got. Give me someone good. Decisive duck. Uh, I mean, I always like when there's ones with colors in the art. I think that those sell for a little bit more. Um, probably about a thousand dollar card here and it does look pretty well centered. So if that gems, that could go up a little bit from there. Now we're probably back to base cards now at this point. So we have the Sensible Sommelier. I don't even know how to say that, honestly. I do like the characters better than the animals, though. What do we have? Two left. See if we can hit one good one here. Another Sweet Swan. We had that earlier in this pack. Albeit it wasn't a base card. And the last card in box number one is a Karma Kiwi. That's a duplicate for me, so... Not the best box to start off, but, um, you know, if we add it up, it's about 30. He spent $20,000 on all these cards because he bought multiple boxes of these. Just for the record, he spent $20,000. He's 600, so part of the reason I like these. Something remarkable. I actually think this one might have 11. My why don't I just take him out? Well, we're gonna see what empty eye eye. Unfortunately, this is a duplicate again, um, but it's one of the more valuable ones, actually. I do think there's 11 in here, which I do also think is a good sign. We shall find out. Okay, that's card number one. Next up, we have the Diamond Hands Head. Nice. This, funny enough, is actually one of the more valuable ones. Uh, this is probably like a six or eight hundred dollar base card. That's uh, that's one that I needed too. So. Anti Pretzel says, "Hey guys, remember when people got effing pissed at Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro for selling four 15 card packs of Legacy?" We will never reprint these cards that were actually pr proxies for a thousand dollars. Yeah, now imagine pitching that to this crowd. I don't know what any of that fucking meant. <laughs> I've never done trading cards. Um, Logart says I got cards for them. Worthless wombat. So I'm I'm actually pretty hype about this. That's awesome. Okay, next up. Clever crocodile. Don't think that's a big one. Just a regular base card. Up next, we are already on our rares. So this is four out of eight. Suffocate hate. <laughs> four out of eight, suffocate hate. That's probably about a $500 card there. I don't like how it's like, that's one of the things they messed up on. It's like, that needs to round out and finish out there. Like they messed up the print. Imagine spending $4,000 on a pack of cards and they cut off the image on one of them. How is it $500? Apparently that's what other idiots will pay for it. It's called a greater fool scam. On that a little bit, um, but we'll survive. Okay, we have another one numbered eight coming up here. This is the logical lion. You know, some of these I get, I just have no idea what to say. They're just like another animal. I just know some of the big ones. Um, we do have a number to five coming up next. Yep, very rare. Rod Clark Fat, thanks for following. And we have the Impeccable Inostronaut. I don't even know what that is. Is that an animal or is that made up? It also sort of looks like, like is he flipping the bird? Really looks like it. Next up we have number to two. I think we, did we get an extra card here? There's six, we did we number to two. Okay, let's point. I'm just gonna skip through so we can see all the different patterns at this point. Kind Warrior. It's got little abs. H. Baird says, I mean, after they went out of print, I bought a bunch of booster boxes of Star Trek uh, CCG cards, but they were like $8 a box. On an unrelated note, if anyone is interested in Star Trek CCG cards, DM me. Or Race PM me. I need auto, a sketch, something really Gary B. Base of the ambitious, ambitious angel. The Dumbo octopus. That's a mouthful. Oh, that's pretty. Next peasant. I mean, let's dynamic dinosaur. That is one of the funnier sketches I have seen. Uh, that one looks like a five-year-old drew it. Somebody's that one does. So what is that? Baker break costs. 
fine. I don't know. There's a few that I would rather have than that one, but uh, I'm happy to get an auto here, and it does look pretty well centered. Autograph looks good. If I could dual 10, we'd be talking then. And the last base, give me someone good here. The Tasteful Malayan Tapir. Uh, I don't even know what that is or if I'm saying that right. But. Basically, Magic the Gathering made special packs for their 30th anniversary of a bunch of really valuable rare cards, but they were special, so they weren't tournament legal. So a bunch of money for versions of cards that you can't play. I guess I can understand from a collectible standpoint why you want, might want reproductions. Like, I have a reproduction of some old comic books. Like, here, one sec. Like, this is a reproduction of Action Comics number one. Obviously, it's, you know, not the original, because the originals are worth millions and millions of dollars. But, like, I still think it's cool to have, to look at the art and be able to, you know, see what it was like to have a physical copy of it. So maybe that's the idea, is to, like, have a reproduction. So it's just kind of an interesting thing you can look at. I don't know, though. I don't play card games. Rod Clark Vet, thanks for gifting two tier one subs. Superman does yeet a car. This is my favorite guy. The guy down here. That is the correct reaction. Look at this man. Holy fuck. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. I feel you. I feel you, man. This has just been me for the last, like, seven years. <laughs> God. Wait a second, I just realized that pack only had nine cards. I just went back and counted them. Gary B, Ambitious, and had a nine. Pig, why did they face the favorite spike up? I need to look up how to say that. We're in here. Glide. If back to heaven. Cool cat. Oh, what the heck. That's another pretty bad drawing. And let's see a bit of that. Oh, I don't know. Five. 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 Like, he even knows they're bad. Ugh. Crypto bros. CZ just had a very ugly interview with CNBC, where they ask him about liabilities, where he can't answer questions, and where he avoids questions altogether. This is right after yesterday, he talked about how 99% of people will lose crypto storing in self-custody. I'm gonna go through this. I've been talking about Binance a lot recently and I'm not trying to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The fact is that your crypto just really isn't safe on exchanges at this point. There's a lot going on and there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt about Binance specifically and maybe for good reason. So I'd rather tell people about what's going on and have them have the ability to pick whether they want to self-custody or move it over to a hot wallet than have another exchange go down. And to be clear, I don't hope Binance goes down, but uh, they are looking a little bit sketchy. I also want So Binance is the number one crypto exchange now on the planet, and they are looking like maybe they're not doing so hot either. This is, of course, right off the bat, uh, or off the toes, or back, off the back of, that's the turn of phrase, right off the back of um, FTX's collapse, which was number two. So now the number one is kind of looking like a bank run as people are starting to withdraw large amounts of money from it before everything falls apart. I wanna talk about a few other things in crypto here today. If you don't mind, hit the subscribe button if you wanna follow videos like this in the future. I appreciate that. There's also a link to Marjax in case you wanna trade a small percentage of your crypto that's underneath the video. Now I did say in the title to take your coins off Binance and that's not because Binance is definitely going to go down, but at a time where exchanges are dropping like flies, CEOs are having a hard time answering questions, which we'll see here in a moment. It seems like the best time to self-custody, and there's really no downside to it. Assuming that you can write down words and you can keep them in a safe place and you can send crypto to a wallet, you should be in a good place to self-custody. Now, of course, there's a little bit more that goes into it, but I think that's probably a better solution. CZ was looking really sketchy with his interview earlier. Oh, yeah. And then leaving your crypto on exchanges and just playing Russian roulette with which one's going down next. So there are a couple different parts of this interview that I want to cover. Why is he so close to his mic? It might be an angle uh, thing. Because, like, I don't know. Like, I, I'm closer to my mic than I think it looks like. Like, look. Well, that... I forget I have boobs. I forget I have boobs. I forget I have boobs. <laughs> I can't just do a camera. Like, I was... I'm, like, right here. I'm not that far away from my mic. Uh
couldn't find parts of the interview online yet, but Meet Kevin has it in one of his videos, so I'll be playing those portions of the video where CZ is speaking. So let's let's start this from the beginning here. We want to be transparent. We want to set the golden standard for reliability, solidness in the so space. Do it. Would you be able to handle it if somebody asked you for two point one billion dollars back? Would that be okay? Would you be able to still withstand the things? We're financially okay. Including you have two point one billion dollars to give away if somebody came to sub baby in Discord. Let me take a look. Is it in which channel is it in? Twitch stream chat or is it in fan art creative? Let me see. <laughs> Not fully tangerine. Beautiful. <laughs> I like that one. Where did it go? There it is. Reclaw, to claw that back, you'd we'll still be fine? We'll, we'll let the lawyers handle it. Our fin we are financially strong. So right away she asks, are you able to repay $2.1 billion? She says this because they apparently got some money from FTX and forgot about it. According to CZ, they forgot about $2.1 billion. They have about $60 billion worth of assets on the platform, but they forgot about $2.1 billion that they got from FTX. And she's asking, hey, are you going to basically give that back? Or if the lawyers call for it, are you going to be able to withstand that $2.1 billion? And you have to realize that $2.1 billion here is much different than a $2.1 billion uh, withdrawal from the exchange because of the fact that they can't just you know, let the coins go out like they would with a withdrawal, they have to take some of their money and give it back, some of their actual profit, right? So that would be quite difficult, I think, for any exchange. But Binance, if anyone can do it, it's probably Binance, right? They're making a lot of money. But keep in mind, too, that's a significant amount of money just to claw over. That's a significant amount of profit that they have to give up. Now, let's rewatch that for just a second. Be able to handle it if somebody asked you for 2.1 billion dollars back would that be okay would you be able to still withstand things we're financially okay including you have 2.1 billion dollars to give away if somebody came to reclaw to claw that back you'd we'll, still be fine we'll, we'll let the lawyers handle it Our fin we are financially strong so he totally dodges the question as well he does not say whether they would actually be able to handle a 2.1 billion dollar loss from this basically having to give up 2.1 billion dollars and he says that they're financially strong, so he does not straight up answer. And he also says they'll let the lawyers deal with it. Now, I've talked a lot about finance recently. There are some questions over who actually owns a company, how to serve them papers, uh, and just because they have such a weird convoluted ownership structure. Now, a weird ownership structure sounds similar to FTX, so just be careful there. Now, let's move on to the next part. In terms of uh, the credibility of Binance, uh, you disclosed that Binance holds about $60 billion of crypto assets. Uh, but thus far, uh, you haven't disclosed your liabilities. And I wonder why that is and whether you will. Yeah, so we are working with the firms to do the uh, audit of financials, li liabilities, etc. Very simply, Binance does not owe people money. Binance does not have loans from other companies, from other funds. We just, it, we just don't have it. You can ask any fund in the, in, the, in the ecosystem, you can ask any VC. We actually do also do not have VC investments, so we don't owe anybody any money. And uh, we also do not have loans to other people um, that we depend on for our next payroll. So um, we are very simple, very self-contained type of organization, and uh, we manage our cash very simply. So they say that they don't have any liabilities, but they do have possibly a $2.1 billion liability with FTX. So keep that in mind here. <laughs> don't reveal every problem. So, no, but, I, but um, an audit there are from a audit big four auditor kind of... would reveal that, CZ. If you could right. get a big four auditor to say that, if, if you're saying that some of them don't want to work with you, that raises questions too. They, they don't want to work with you because you don't have the files and the data that would make them feel comfortable signing off and, and giving that stamp of approval? Uh, actually, many of them don't even know how to audit crypto exchanges. Um, they don't, they don't, <laughs> what does they don't that really, mean? Come on. They, so when they audit, they audit, they are very used to auditing a firm. Hey, Thanks. See, they, hundred, Coinbase has a big four. Coinbase has a big four auditor. 
Um, I actually, I'm, I, I don't look at Coinbase. We don't really look at. I think other, so though. I, 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 I don't know the details. It. And they do have a big four auditor. They have Deloitte. So the fact is that they don't look at Coinbase, even though it's one of the largest crypto exchanges in the world, and they actually are able to perform audits. And this has been the main concern that I've had with Binance. They say that they don't have any liabilities, but they cannot prove it, right? They cannot prove that they have zero liabilities. They can't prove that they don't take customer funds. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm ordering dinner right now while we're doing this. And going I'm not trying to be rude. And leverage it or trade it. Uh, they say that they won't that they are one-to-one -one backed, but you could have a one-to-one -one relationship where they still have it, but they're using it in their own funds or to push up certain cryptos or to, you know, backstop BNB, right? Because BNB's barely fallen throughout this entire bear market down less than Bitcoin from the high. So I just wanted to cover this interview. I think that CZ definitely avoids some important questions, definitely makes some weird statements that a uh, big four accounting firm would not be able to show uh, what Binance wants to show and that they don't know how to actually audit Binance, I think that they could probably handle it. They could give us more than what Mazars gave us with just the Bitcoin uh, reserve, right? Or Bitcoin versus li Bitcoin liabilities. Um, but I texted you, but just in case you hear this quicker, um, did you want that burger exactly as it comes, or do you want me to take anything off at Baja? Bitcoin assets versus Bitcoin liability. Vegan burger, obviously. So I think that Binance really does have to show more than they're showing right now. Otherwise, I am a little bit concerned if they cannot actually go through an audit or will not perform an audit. I realize that it would be intensive, but it would... Did you want a side of fries or anything? I don't know if the fries are vegan provide a lot of clarity on the business. But I business. assume you do. Now moving on to a big a big crypto uh, mining company. They say lose 1.7 billion on 519 million in revenue and this is basically talking about core scientific. They did a SPAC and just last quarter they lost 435 million on 162 million in revenue. And it's lost 1.7 billion. Their in fries the first are fucking months. awesome. I love their fries. Months of the year on 519 million in revenue. Now there is some news that they might be bailed out a okay, bit just by the one of their fries? creditors. Cool. This is uh, the financial services firm B Riley, and they offered Core Scientific a 72 million dollar uh, financing deal to avoid bankruptcy and preserve value for Core Scientific shareholders. Now. The company itself is worth about 140 million right now, so they're basically offer them, offering them uh, financing for uh, half of their market cap, which is significant. They have 42 million dollars in loans already to B. Riley. In Core Scientific's last quarterly report filed on November 22, they said that they did not have enough cash to get through 2023, and they say the reason for this is because of one, the extra electricity costs. And also because Celsius was unable to repay a $2.1 million loan. And this is part of the reason for them being you know, uh, low on cash. Now, keep in mind, $2.1 million is so little compared to how much they've lost. When you consider they've lost $1.7 billion throughout the year, and they're citing a $2 million loan, that seems unlikely to me that that's the reason why. We're talking about a 1 to 1,000 ratio there. So I think that they're just in trouble because of their own mismanagement. Even the company that's offering them credit said that they mismanaged and that they grew way too aggressively. Uh, and they kind of gave a scathing uh, report or assessment on Core Scientific here. They said that they're, they had an aggressive, ill-conceived strategy to continue to build power facilities and expand miners while never selling Bitcoin on hand and never hedging prices. Now, I've been saying this for a while that we have to watch Bitcoin miners because a lot of them most likely will go bankrupt. And a lot of them have put themselves in bad position. So unless they continue to dilute shareholders and assuming they're able to do that, or they continue to get higher and higher interest rate loans while Bitcoin mining is becoming less and less profitable, a lot of them won't be able to make it out, right? Uh, I think you want a company that has as strong a balance sheet as possible if you're getting into crypto miners, but right now is a very risky time. So we might have some of them going bankrupt, selling some of their Bitcoin miners at a discount 
the hash rate comes down, there's maybe some fear, uncertainty, and doubt about that, or it actually helps the other crypto mining companies Beginner become stronger says, because long they're time becoming more profitable. VOD watcher, occasional lurker. Have you ever watched the Super Kids on stream? Merry Christmas. I have well, not. They're um, what is it? More Bitcoin to go around per. Sorry, I'm uh, almost done, everyone. I'm really, reward. really sorry. But right now is such a scary time. A lot of them have already shed their Bitcoin, which is good for the Bitcoin price because uh, while they do have to continuously sell their new Bitcoin, a lot of them don't have a bag to dump on the market like they used to. A lot of them are running pretty lean in terms of how much Bitcoin they have right now and they're holding on to. But be on the lookout for this because it is going to probably get worse for a lot of these Bitcoin miners. Now, let me know what you think about all this underneath the video. I'm not trying to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt about Binance. Just trying to give you... All right. Thank you for bearing with me during that. But we will have a yummy dinner in a little bit. So that's good. <laughs> Elon banned the official Mastodon account on Twitch. That's funny. What a shit show. Paris, thank you. Non-fungible. By definition, the word suggests something unique or irreplaceable. Therefore, non-fungible tokens are, in a way, one-of-a-kind works of art. Chicago Tonight's Evan Garcia recently visited an NFT art gallery in Wicker Park that is the first of its kind. I'm Not Art isn't your everyday art gallery. Forget physical paintings or sculptures. In this space, screens display digital art. More specifically, NFTs or non-fungible tokens. An NFT you can think of as an asset, a digital asset that is stored on the blockchain or secured on the blockchain. And so that asset can really represent anything. In an art gallery, like, like I'm not art. It's almost like that makes it worthless. Here. It's arbitrary. Uh, it can represent a piece of art. So that can be a video file, uh, you know, a, a, an image file. NFTs are kept on the blockchain, the digital ledger used for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Most NFTs are part of the Ethereum blockchain. And the good thing about those with those lines, you can, if some were messed up, you can just straighten them a little bit. I'm Not Art opened its doors last summer. Owner Matthew Shapiro says it's Chicago's first physical NFT gallery and one of the first in the world. Uh, as this kind of NFT boom was happening, you know, since like kind of the beginning of this year, saw a really big opportunity to create something in the space that we thought would be a little bit different than some of the other things. <laughs> Gitara like, says, are really We're watching the closing of the auction, which closes in an hour. NFTs made headlines last March when the artist Beeple sold one for $69 million at Christie's auction house. He just sold another one for $28.9 million last week. So I wanted to take locations in Chicago that all Chicagoans could have a connection to and bring them to life with one line. Local artist Sinclair was featured in a recent I'm Not Art exhibit showcasing local NFT artists. He says copying and pasting NFTs doesn't hinder the art form. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm so not mad. I felt the need to bring that up unprompted. If you're screenshotting or screen recording my videos and posting them as your own, that's only bringing more advertisement to me. If you think that's true, I'm happy for you. And more prestige to the artwork. I have some of these um, postcards, and then I have these kind of pigeons, which are also like an iconic thing. In, in the city that you, you see them everywhere. Willia Zue is another local NFT artist. She pursued digital art after leaving an LA architecture job in late 2019. At the beginning of 2020, pandemic started and I had a lot of free time by my own. So I was trying to think of another kind of creative outlet that I can utilize what I learned from my previous experience in the architecture world into something new. At the I'm Not Art exhibit, Zwei's work, Until We Meet Again, sold for 2.92 Ethereum, a current value of more than $12,000. Tonight, the gallery is hosting an NFT drop for artist Brendan Fernandez. What is an NFT drop? It's basically the public release of minted NFTs for collectors to purchase. Minting an NFT puts it on the blockchain, but also consumes a great deal of energy through computational power. Artist Brendan Fernandez says he's aware of the environmental concerns surrounding NFTs. 
2% of this uh, drop will go to sustainability, looking through different sources to generate, you know, build. So yeah, we're fucking everything over now, but like 2% of the ridiculous money we make will maybe give to, I don't know, do something to maybe make it less damaging when we do this in the future? Mm -hmm. Does that absolve us? 2%? community <laughs> it's less than sales tax also like supporting like growing trees um and and and, and taking care of like you know the kind of environmental issues that this is coming with. As for the future of I'm Not Art, Shapiro says he hopes to buy the Wicker Park building they're in and continue operating in the digital landscape known as the metaverse, where anyone in the world can virtually visit the gallery. What we've seen in the pandemic with the adoption of Zoom and, and all these different things is that like the digital social experience is important. And this is the metaverse we think is kind of a real cool extension of that. It's a combination of video games with, with Zoom in some type of way and some sort of player controlled world. For Chicago Whenever I hear any of these people try and explain what they think their definition of the metaverse is, it makes me think they've never played a video game in their lives. <laughs> hey, this is Evan Garcia. And I'm Not Art is open to the public daily from noon to 4 p.m. and around the clock, of course, in the metaverse. Online, you can also bid on NFTs in the Souvenir Project by Brendan Fernandez. You can visit our website to learn more. I don't even think she sounded like she wanted to read that story. Ah, <sighs> well, we watched some of the CoffeeZilla coverage of the Sam Bankman Freed thing, so I guess we should continue um he did a couple interviews with sam accidentally got him to admit to fraud so that's fun not accident i should say uh accidentally on sam's part this was very much planned by coffeezilla i interviewed sam bankman freed and he hated it so much that he left within minutes in part because he didn't know he would be interviewed by me he thought he was being interviewed by someone else on twitter and i snuck up in the dms and got on the call and started peppering him with some harder questions. And within minutes of that, um, suddenly Mr. Open and Honest decided he needed to leave. But I didn't let that stop me because I joined an interview the very next day doing the exact same thing, ambushing him again, and uh, I got some pretty good answers out of it. I think the running theme here is with this whole press tour, he's going with this image of, you know, I'm embarrassed, I made a mistake, but I'm here to be open and honest now. But that's not true, because when you actually hit him with some hard questions, suddenly meetings come up, suddenly he can't talk, suddenly he's just Mr. Ums and Ahs. So I wanted to show both interviews. I think they're very interesting. I really wanted to press him on this $8 billion that mysteriously went missing that he didn't know about. And I'm sure I'm gonna be breaking these down more specifically in the days to come. But for now, I just wanted you to enjoy these unedited conversations with Sam Bankman fried that he didn't know we'd be having. Uh, Coffeezilla, the mic is yours, man. Another sub baby. Let's take a look. <laughs> Nikelli fried tomatoes, uh, tiny furniture being stolen by aliens. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. This stream is weird. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, I just wanted to quickly ask. So there's this big question about this. I'm glad I called comics. Thanks so much. Billion dollars that went into some kind of a stub account. If I just want to get some clarification on this, from my understanding, what you're basically claiming is, is that back when FTX didn't have banking, you'd use Silvergate through uh, to have people to wire money to Alameda Research and then credit them on the FTX side, but you didn't actually account for that money going back to them. So essentially you had like $8 billion coming to FTX you didn't have on the books, technically. I mean, how, can you explain more how that worked? Because it seems like such a key part of this whole thing. And so far we've gotten like very vague things about stub accounts. Just All of these interviews that Sam Bankman fried decided to do were so stupid. He incriminated himself multiple times. Try to be as specific as you can on how that actually happened. So... Um, I, so, and, and again, some of these are things I'm trying to piece together that I don't have the full answer to, but, um, uh, but I think that part of it was, I believe that there was, um, you know, uh, correct FTX accounting, um, in terms of, you know, the audited financials, um, but, um, 
uh, but that at least I can say that when you sort of pulled up, um, you know, on a dashboard, what uh, what you know the accounts look like, um, uh, it would not have uh, it wouldn't have uh, displayed um, you know those transfers, and it wouldn't have displayed the balances related to those, uh, which meant that it was um, that the sort of what you would naively see as the relevant. Um, uh, you know, it's a relevant uh, sort of position size was quite a bit smaller than what the full position size was. Specifically, you're talking... Bad news, guys. We only have two FTX fortune cookies left. Meek says, Elizabeth Holmes and Sam Beckman fried have taken the orange. Let's hope Elon will have a change in fashion soon, too. Money talks. You can make it yell. FTX. Let's see the other one. Defy reality. <laughs> Which literally means de deregulate finance reality. Great. Great. Talking <sighs> about... And that's it. That's the end of the FTX fortune cookies. Alpaca Sent says, don't forget that Trump is going to go for a change in suit color as well. Yeah, I wish. I don't think that's going to happen. The funds that went into Alameda that was credited to FT on, on the customer side on FTX, yeah, you're saying right. you're saying that basically when you looked at your dashboard, Alameda was using those funds to trade perhaps, but that ultimately you couldn't see that on the Alameda side because there was some kind of an accounting problem where there was a mix up with where it was credited. Is, is that the story? Yeah, it's something roughly like that, or at the very least that the, the, dis the, the common displays of it did not, um, did not, dis did not include that piece of the accounting. A real quick second follow up. Um, so I've talked to a few Alameda insiders and I've kind of run them by your uh, story of things. I think you probably are aware. I'm, I'm pretty skeptical. Um, and they one of them when Sorry, i decentralized did i say deregulated you know why did i say that i told them like sort of like could it be that sam wouldn't know about this somebody who worked with you and they actually like they laughed and they said there's no way he's like he's like claiming to be stupid now when he was like this genius wonder kid and so my sense of things is how do you explain this how do you explain the fact that you're some of some of the people hey baja um, with the food, I got a root beer. Would you take, I, I, I have like a Breaking B Bad frozen mug somewhere. Could you stick it in the freezer? And if not, some other mug, if I have one. Some kind of mug I could like freeze and then put the root beer in so it's really cold. I appreciate you. People who worked with you for years, your employees have come out and said, there's no way he didn't know about these back doors. There's no way he didn't know what Caroline was doing when you guys were very close. The offices were right next to each other. I mean, how do you expect us to believe this story you're spinning? I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I had a lot going on, um, and I was spread thin. I was a bit less grounded than I had been before, um, and... I Thanks, lost honey. track of a lot of important things. I lost track. You know how it is. I lost track of like ten billion dollars. It is what it is. And I, I mean, I think that. Those well, are well, hang, hang on one second. I think spread thin is one thing, right? Like I think uh, you know things can get out of hand, but we're talking about a fundamental understanding of whether Alameda was commingling funds with FTX. I mean, I saw your Stephanopoulos and Sorkin interview, and you're pretty categorical that you had no idea that you were mingling funds. So that's what I'm asking about. Not like, did you know exactly what was happening on November 7th or 8th? I mean, I can understand sort of things getting out of control, but we're talking about the most fundamental grasp on how your business worked. You're telling us you had no idea. I was not aware of a lot of what was going on. I was vaguely aware that some of these systems existed. Um, I had no details of them. And, uh, and I, I you know, was not spending much time. Uh, 
and on uh looking at you know just set the root beer outside the window the root beer will probably come cold it's just if you if you've never had root beer in like a frosty mug i recommend it it's very good position risk management it was a big mistake i mean all um, right sam i've just got so guys guys i've just got a dm <laughs> sam sam has to has to leave so guys has to, wait sam has can to i mark uh so yeah i i have a couple questions Read the margin accounts. I mean, um, there's sort of all this talk about the terms of service. Did you break terms of service? Did you not? You're basically claiming that there was this separate side of your terms of service. That's which... true. Ru you, Baja introduced me to root beer floats. I was aware of them. I just never had one. It was pretty fucking good. Said that uh, if people had margin accounts, you could hey, about, use Bob? kind of their funds or there was looser language around that. But I talked to somebody from Alameda and asked how big the position of like or how many people had assets in the type of accounts that that terms of service would apply to versus the regular terms of service, which said you couldn't use their money. And they said it was about a billion that was in the margin trading or the, the margin like um, side of things where you could reuse their funds or whatever. And there was the rest of it was not there. So does that mean the rest of the money was stolen? I mean, like it seems like you're putting all your eggs behind this one excuse about, you know, there was this separate side of the terms of service. How do you address everyone else? So I don't have all the data in front of me. My memory is that it was substantially more than a billion um, in the margin trading program. Um, but I don't have that data in front of me right now. So I can't verify that. Um, on top of that, there were other effects as well. Um, and, I don't have the data about all the details of those in front of me, but my understanding is that, um, you know, some of those were, uh, you know, uh, early uh, wire transfers sent directly to Alameda, which I think contributed to the position as well. Um, and then there are open futures positions on top of that, you know, on top of the spot margin positions um, where, uh, you know, there can be effectively socialized, uh, you know, losses, clawbacks if, you know, one is unable to be closed um, uh, in time. And so I think it was a combination of those factors. Um, uh, there may have been other factors, too, but that's what I've been, you know, able to, to piece together. Um, and that, you know, putting those together, I think it is, is, is likely how you got um, to most of this, but, um, I, uh, but, but again, here, here's the it, thing. How do, how do you account for maybe the difference in what people are hearing from insiders, uh, who are not being accused of fraud and you who sort of is, there's a very different sort of story going on here where you, you know, you're saying like, oh, there's this big p position that we didn't know about because you told me that the last time we spoke in a space and I went and followed up and I said, Hey, is this true? Could it be that this, uh, you know, number just wasn't known about? And some Alameda insider said, no way you could see on dashboards really simply where it was and FTX dashboards, not Alameda dashboards, dashboards that you yourself had access to. So my question is sort of like, it seems like when I go to Alameda insiders or FTX insiders, they're saying this story makes no sense. But when I go to you, who sort of has every incentive to sort of lie and obfuscate, um, because obviously the incentive here is, well, otherwise you might go to jail, uh, which obviously would be a very bad thing for you. It seems like all of a sudden all the excuses come out and then when we follow up on them, they don't seem to be true. So I, I, I don't know, like help me square this because, you know, it'd be nice if you were telling the truth, but everything we're hearing from insiders is that you're not. I don't know what to tell you. I'm saying what I believe. I don't know which insiders you're talking about. I don't know exactly what they said. It doesn't line up with my beliefs, but... I believe I didn't commit many felonies. I can't speak to what they think or what they said. But why are multiple people more, within but... your company at less senior roles knowing more about the company than you? And Alamy was not a company that is running at the time, but I hear you. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't know exactly what you're referring to. I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know what they said. Um, I don't Well, I'm telling you what some of what they said. I mean, for example, yeah, one of them I was know. that there was like the like that backdoor system or whatever, A that you knew it existed and B that it was easy to see the balance or the the position 
of Alameda very simply on FTX dashboards. Because right. they had a they had a margin trading account with you guys. So you guys could have seen it. But you guys uh, could see the margin positions of but, everybody, no? But a lot of the position did not appear in that main account. So where was the position? It was in a separate stub account, I believe, related to wire transfers that had been sent, you know, to Alameda Research, uh, generally primarily to FTX, um, having its own bank accounts. So who controlled the secret stub account? I Did I'm, anyone at Alameda know about this secret stub account? I mean, are, are we supposed to believe that just like there was this stub account that nobody knew about? I don't know who knew about what when. I'm sorry. I mean, cl clearly somebody lost the money, right? Like, obviously, the money went somewhere. Somebody lost it. It just seems really convenient that $8 billion was located in this, like, account that didn't show up when you pulled up Alameda's balances, right? Yeah. I I don't know what to tell you. Um, then why did you come and do this interview? Why are you in a Twitter space talking with people? You, sir, are an idiot. Okay, so a separate question is obviously around this Forbes thing because you've said you don't have you don't have present knowledge of sort of like Alameda's balances, and they came out and said that you were giving them up to date balances from Alameda. How do you square that? Just as of a month ago, you knew um, Alameda's position. Ooh, How does yeah, that square with quick. your statement about like you don't know what's going on? I haven't seen the the thing that you're referring to, but. I was able to give very rough approximations that included a subset of the list of assets that Alameda had. Um, I, by asking about the assets, I believe to be the largest sets of them. Oh, um, I was actually, not, good tip. What about Bob? Makes sense. Not giving you know full accountings. Works uh, like a heat sink, basically. I'd imagine. Yeah. Um, okay. I, Makes it way um, more conductive. All of Alameda's balances okay. or positions, um, because. I, you know, didn't generally have those, and because it was it was a complicated process, that depended on liquidity of tokens and things like that from the Ford's perspective. So, I was just sending them a sort of abbreviated partial list of Alameda assets periodically. But that means you knew that what what Alameda had, even roughly, you knew what Alameda had. I had a rough sense of what their assets are. That is correct. Um, by rough, I I do mean to within, you know, $10 billion or so. <sighs> Sam Bankman fried was finally arrested yesterday, putting him on the CoffeeZilla wall of shame. And today we have huge bombshells to share with you of all the new evidence that just came out, starting with his arrest. The Royal Bahamas Police Force just arrested Sam last night in cooperation with the United States in light of criminal charges finally being filed against Sam. He's been accused of multiple counts of fraud, and we're going to talk about everything he's accused of. But first, I want to say, I know we haven't heard anything from law enforcement up to this point, but clearly it's not because they weren't working. They just didn't want to scare Sam into fleeing the country. In fact, the Department of Justice hid their indictment from the public. They sealed it in order to prevent Sam from knowing they were coming. And that strategy seems to have worked because even days before his arrest, Sam was publicly saying in interviews that he didn't think he would be arrested. You're certain that once all the investigations have happened that you won't be arrested for fraud? I don't think I will be. I don't think that I, I don't think I tried to do anything wrong. Wow. So it looks like he fell for it. Sam must have thought that he was gonna get away with it, but that is not the case. And now that he is arrested, law enforcement have now all come out of the woodwork all at once publicizing their work. So several charges got levied against Sam from different law enforcement organizations. And we're gonna go through all of them, including new evidence that we did not know before. But first I wanted a little more context. So I asked a great YouTube lawyer, Legal Eagle, to kind of break down this situation for us. 
to explain who's going after Sam, why, and what we can expect in terms of punishment. Yeah, there was a time when it was an open question as to whether the U.S. government would actually prosecute Sam Bankman-Fried and which department of the government had jurisdiction. And there were three likely candidates, the CFTC, the SEC, and the DOJ. Uh, those questions have now been answered, and the answer is everyone. Uh, putting together a successful prosecution for white-collar crimes takes a lot of time. And while critics said that SBF would never be prosecuted, getting two complaints in one indictment this fast is about as fast as the government can do absolutely anything. Now, the CFTC the and the SEC filed civil complaints seeking monetary damages and injunctive relief to prevent SBF from being basically near a corporation or anyone's money ever again. The DOJ filed a criminal indictment related to wire fraud charges, conspiracy, money laundering, and campaign finance charges. Now, unlike the CFTC and the SEC complaints, if the DOJ convicts, SBF could be looking at some serious jail time. It's hard to say exactly how much because at this point we don't have all the facts related to the crime seriousness scores or the potential sentencing enhancements, but here there are three groups of victims, uh, FTX customers, Customers, Alameda lenders, and the United States. More victims generally means consecutive rather than concurrent sentences. And the more money at issue, the more severe Mrs. the sentence. Wants you to For some know, offenses, any crime involving more than $550 million you. gets the max enhancements. So we could easily be talking about more than 20 years in jail. Wow, that's very helpful context. Thanks to Legal Eagle for that insight. He'll be linked in the description below. But now that we know what's going on, I wanna start talking about the SEC's complaint because today they accused Sam of defrauding investors for $1.8 billion. Quote, Bankman Freed was orchestrating a massive years long fraud, diverting billions of dollars of customer funds for his own personal benefit. Now, these are accusations we're familiar with. But there's very interesting information here about Alameda's missing $8 billion. If you remember, during one of my interviews with Sam, we asked him where all the money had gone. And he told us that there was this accounting error, which caused him to forget about $8 billion of customer funds that had been put in a poorly labeled fiat account and had been lent and lost by Alameda Research. But the SEC in this complaint says that wasn't an accident. It was held in an account called fiat at ftx.com, which wasn't poorly labeled for no reason or because it was a mistake. According to the SEC, Sam directed Alameda to hide this because he was, quote, concerned that this enormous liability would alarm Alameda's lenders. And that kind of makes sense. If you know somebody doesn't have $8 billion, owes $8 billion, that is pretty alarming and would make you think twice. And this would be huge evidence of intentional fraud. And not only that, the SEC claims on multiple occasions, Bankman Freed directed FTX to increase the credit line amount by which Alameda could maintain a negative balance on their platform to the point where it grew to billions of dollars and effectively became limitless. Now, again, we are familiar with that claim, but here's another thing we didn't know because apparently Sam Bankman Freed also directed their $8 billion liability to be moved into an account that wouldn't be charged interest like any normal user. So in other words, he purposely moved their margin account, which he said he didn't know about. He said he didn't know about this 8 billion into an account that wouldn't be charged interest like most of FTX's users. So all of this evidence makes it seemingly impossible that he didn't know about this stub account or fiat account, whatever he wants to call it, like he claims. Clearly he knew and the SEC accusing him of this adds a lot of credibility to that. Now, in addition to the SEC, this internal knowledge of Sam and Alameda was further confirmed in a hearing today in the U.S. House Committee, where the bankruptcy lawyer, John Ray III, who's overseeing the FTX bankruptcy, he was asked about if there's any way Sam didn't know about the backdoor access that Alameda had. And here's what he said. That backdoor which you've said allowed for unlimited access of Alameda. Sounds like no real plan to hide the Ponzi part of the Ponzi scheme. I it's, it's a case where I think Sam, and I've heard him talk, it might just be that he's a good liar, but he doesn't seem to be a good liar. He seems really bad at it. I think he doesn't understand that what he did is a scam that much. He certainly understands that he shouldn't have been moving money around, but I don't think he understands... Ponzi schemes and how he was effectively participating in one. <laughs> I genuinely don't know. Essentially unlimited access into the FTX customer accounts to fund their investments. In your eyes, is there any way that Sam Bankman-Fried or 
senior management wouldn't know about it's actually kind of interesting the similarities between him and um charles ponzi of the famous ponzi scheme they both started their careers or at least they both tried to make money arbitraging by trading assets in different parts of the world to make money so charles ponzi wanted to sell these international stamps he wanted to buy them in europe where they were cheaper come back to america and sell them in what's known as an arbitrage an arbitrage is basically a trade that you're guaranteed to make money on there isn't risk as long as you know the procedure you can do so sam bankman freed began his career by arbitraging crypto on exchanges um in asia and america because the actual cost of bitcoin was different and it was cheaper in the united states than it was in uh certain countries in asia so he would do this arbitrage trade where he would buy in america and sell in asia or vice versa i forget which way it went it's interesting the similarities between him and ponzi but whatever this sort of thing no wow Sam is getting slammed from every direction, including the guy overseeing his company's own bankruptcy. And you know what? I couldn't be happier because up till now, it's just been Sam talking about how this was an embarrassing mistake. And finally, the adults have come in the room. We have real investigators, forensic professionals saying there's no shot that this story is true. On top of that, the company's own accounting practices were just horrific, which I found funny. They use QuickBooks. A multi-billion dollar company using QuickBooks. QuickBooks? QuickBooks. I like how the Congresswoman can't even believe it could be so terrible at FTX. I mean, I know this isn't evidence of fraud. It's just kind of funny and embarrassing because I use QuickBooks. Will I watch the Netflix documentary on Bernie Madoff? Probably. Books for my YouTube channel, but these guys are using it for a billion dollar organization. And you can tell this bankruptcy lawyer is like, oh my gosh, they're using QuickBooks. Nothing against QuickBooks, it's a very nice tool, just not for a multi-billion dollar company. Now, from here, I want to move on from the SEC and the House Committee, and I want to talk about the CFTC revelations, because they also filed a complaint. And again, it's really bad for Sam. It's a 40-page document, but most alarming is this revelation. According to the CFTC, Sam bankman fried knew back in September, remember they went bankrupt in November, he knew back in September that Alameda was hopelessly insolvent, and he considered shutting it down. Quote, in or around September 2022, bankman fried drafted and shared a document that questioned whether Alameda should be permanently shut down. The document titled, We Came, We Saw, We Researched, began, I only started thinking about this today, and so haven't vetted it much, but I think it might be time for Alameda Research to shut down. Honestly, it was guy. probably time to do that a year ago. And then he says the most alarming part, quote, the fact we didn't hedge as much as we should have alone cost more in expected value than all the money Alameda has ever made or ever will make. Who's in other here? words, they were down bad. They had lost more money than they ever made or ever will make. He knew they weren't coming back from this back in September. But did he unwind it? Did he release this document? No, he kept the scam going. And it's just further evidence of this being an intentional fraud. Now, from here, we're finally going to move to the big kahuna, the Department of Justice complaint, where we get to the criminal allegations and we talk about jail time. So today, the DOJ released the uh, sealed indictment where they revealed eight counts of fraud. Now, we're not going to go through every single one of them because they kind of repeat, but they range from like conspiracy to commit wire fraud and wire fraud itself to conspiracy to money launder and then also conspiracy to violate campaign finance laws, going back to the huge donations to political parties they made. But the big takeaway is that if he actually goes down for these eight things, he's facing serious prison time. And in my opinion, I think he's going to be declared guilty of at least some of these. I think the evidence is overwhelming. I personally have a confession from Sam that he commingled funds. We've got SEC complaints that he knowingly hid those $8 billion. We've got the CFTC saying he knew back in September that Alameda was in trouble. So it's just, there's too much stacked against him is what I'm saying. But ultimately, we will see what happens. And you don't actually know until the actual trial happens. So we will be following it closely.
But either way, I just wanted to say this is a win regardless. The fact that he's arrested, the fact he's going to have to stand trial and answer for what he's done and not be able to weasel his way out of it is something I'm very happy about. It's a huge win for everyone. I just wanted to cover this real quick. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. And I will see you in the next one. Crazy stuff. That'll be an interesting trial. I'm sure it's going to take a long time. But Well, the food's here. So I think that's going to be a stream. A little bit shorter, but we had less to cover today anyway. We covered all the Trump stuff and everything. So let's see who we will raid. What's sharp? We can't get along and do what America and what all of you are asking us to do. Then we aren't going to convince me that we're the party to support. All right. Have a good night, everyone. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll probably do some foil tomorrow. We'll do a foil Friday. Love you too, Mr. Blast. We'll do like a conspiracies, I think, tomorrow. So I will see you then. Have a wonderful evening. You're all awesome. Night, everyone.